That's Nino against the ropes in the corner with Monzone raking him. And Nino holding him. McGovern had the look of a fighter and the fighting technique of a human volcano. Fighting like a bear cat, albeit a five foot four inch one, the little harp waded into his opponents without nuances or subtleties. Tireless aggressiveness and a punching power qualitatively different from anything ever thrown by a bantamweight before. And on a night in June, an undersized fighter named Billy Kahn, the most dogged sort of underdog, had the mighty Joe Lewis on the ropes. It was as good as the sweet science gets. He was in the light heavyweight ranks, probably the fanciest and best boxer that boxing has seen in a long time. And uh, there are very few fighters that really were as clever as he was. Marcel is seen here arriving in the United States for the official signing with middleweight champion Tony Zale. <laughs> The best fighter, the, great, the greatest fighter outside of Sugar Ray Robinson is Marshall Sade. I said that to them because not only I say it, but most experts say he's the, he's the greatest fighter that ever came out of Europe. I fought Sugar Ray so many times. It's a wonder I don't have diabetes. You know, Jake never dubbed anybody, you know, he didn't have to, you know. I wasn't surprised, but one of the things about always when you was fighting this guy, you knew condition was the name of the game. You had to be in condition. Joe Frazier didn't lack for drama or heroics. Ali would later say it was like death, the closest thing to dying that I know of. that I fought at that time, and you put them all in one basket, they were all great fighters. I was superior than all of the fighters. Foreman hitting the heavy bag is one of the uh, more prodigious sights I've had in my life. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. George hit him. George was big, he was small, he used him like a bouncing ball. What he did was unmatched in sports history. Under a minute to go on round number two. Mayweather's only been stopped once by Rocky Lockwood. Floyd Mayweather has built a reputation as arguably the finest fighter of his generation, as well as one of the greatest defenders in the history of the ring. Mayweather beginning to operate like a surgeon. Fighting Floyd Mayweather is a dose of cold reality. Tomorrow, heavyweight champion Jack Johnson will defend his crown against the man who is already a legend in his time, former heavyweight champion James J. Jeffries. There never was a man better fitted anatomically, physically, and temperamentally. Role of world's heavyweight champion.
Well, you'll have no difficulty in identifying these men because there's an eight-inch difference between them. Sandy Sadler is five feet eight and a half inch. He's hammering away, and in the corner, Barcios is almost helpless. The referee takes a look at it, and the referee stops the fight. Archie Moore was the number one contender for years of the light heavyweights. Once the Archie Moore fight with the rail took place, everybody understood now, a fight is not over until it's over. Archie Moore staggering. Polo Grounds, Max Schmeling, the Black Hills, has been dethroned by Sharky. Tonight he's meeting the famous toy bull, Mickey Walker, the greatest fighter New Jersey ever produced. Oh yes, I feel fine. In great shape. I think by the 29th I'll be in perfect shape. And sometimes with flyweights we never give them the just due because they, they dance around like mosquitoes and we can't really always see how good they are. Ted Kid Lewis went to the States, beat the best, had an incredible record to America and took on the best oh, yes, and, and beat him over there and came back again. He was a, a guy who applied the same type of style that has been applied today. So I think he was more than 20 years ahead of his time. Welterweight champion Jimmy McLarnon was practicing his footwork on the Atlantic City boardwalk, training for his title defense against Barney Ross. McLarnon desperately trying to save his title, trying for just one haymaker. Now, just a minute, Tony. Just, oh, you ain't doing that right. You ain't doing it right. Not? No, you're not throwing your left hand right. You're, listen, you got a tough fight with this Barney Ross. He, he ain't a sucker. I know that. I know. Well, now listen to me. I'll show you how to throw a left hand. One whom we'll never forget, our own Tony Canzanari. One of the more famous welterweight champs of all time was a boxer puncher by the name of Barney Ruff. The winner and still champion, Ruff. I'll prove to everybody that I am not only the lightweight champion, but also a worthy junior welterweight champion. He went as great as me, went as beautiful, everybody know that, but I don't know if I would have beaten him in his style and my style. When I was a little kid, I used to box in the backyards. One day I reached the age of 16, I went out and boxed a fellow and received $20 for this fight in the black eye. My dad came in and he said, look at your face, fighting again for what? I reached in my pocket and bought out a $20 bill and put it in his hand. Dad told my mother, my mother cried, she didn't care about the money. My father turned to me, put the $20 bill into his pocket, pat me on the shoulder and said, Benny, my boy, it's all right. When are you going to fight again? <laughs> he would have probably won five world championships, at least four. 
straw weight, light fly, fly, super fly, and bantam. He would probably won all three. He was incredible, that man. Uh, yes, a freak. I mean, they called him the mighty atom. I mean, he could knock out lightweights. A tremendous puncher. And uh, he held the world flyweight title for seven years. Duran destroyed him. And I said, holy God, look, who is this guy? And we soon found out he was the greatest lightweight of maybe of the century. October 16th, 1909. A perfectly timed straight right to the jaw smashes Ketchell to the canvas. Johnson wipes two of Ketchell's teeth from his glove. He has possibly the greatest resume in the history of boxing. And that's Harry Greb. He went after the best fighters that he could fight, regardless of size or color. You know, he really wanted to be the best. Thank you. I'm the king of the ring. I'm the biggest thing in history. All because of me. Tony. I broke like a butterfly and sting like a beauty. Hey! You're a young man. You're a I lived through 241 professional fights. 241 professional plus 65 amateurs. That's an awful lot of fights. And I'm all right now until I hear a bell. Don't ring any bell. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hundred and twenty nine wins. Nobody ever won more fights in the history of boxing. He never stopped throwing punches. From the opening bell to the final bell. All he would do is look down at his opponent's feet and somehow, by some instinct, would be able to tell when his opponent was throwing a punch and use the proper defensive action against that punch. In just 10 months, he became the first and last fighter to simultaneously hold titles in three weight classes. Joe Lewis, with 25 title defenses, 22 of those were knockouts. I mean, that's great. When they say great to me, it's Joe Lewis. And yet, in two minutes and four seconds, Joe Lewis not only destroyed Max Schmeling, he destroyed the myth of Aryan supremacy. This was the greatest fight in terms of its implications in the history of boxing. If God ever said, uh, make, make a fighter, make a perfect fighter, the closest that would come to that would be Sugar Ray Robs. How about the greatest fighter that ever lived? There's no question about it. Robinson will try to keep him off with his jab and his dazzling combinations. He'd be my pick, uh, Jose, uh, Ray Robinson. I guess he's just about everybody's pick. Robinson, pound for pound, one of the greatest fighting machines in the history of the ring, is a master tactician. So, uh, pound for pound, he has to be the best fighter in the history of boxing. The world welterweight champion. He won 126 fights while losing only once. The greatest fighter, pound for pound, the ring has ever known. Sugar Ray Robinson. <laughs>